All right, y'all, so today's video is gonna be pretty quick and dirty because Wifey Sauce and I actually have to leave in a couple hours to the mountains. I shouldn't say we have to, we get to leave in a couple hours. We're just gonna hang out with some friends, relax for the weekend, unplug for a bit. So sorry if this video is feeling a bit rushed. We, we literally leave in like two hours, which if you're a content creator, you know that's basically zero time whatsoever to get a video done. So sorry in advance, but let's continue. We have this big old beauty around here. So in CES, earlier this year at CES, I actually did a sponsored build of Be Quiet in their suite. It was really fun. We did it inside of their Dark Base 700 White Edition, and I actually haven't even unboxed it since I got back seven months ago. We've got a 2970WX, which is a 24 core, 48 thread, Threadripper 2 CPU. That's got like 64 gigs of RAM in it. I forget what GPU is in there. Maybe 2080, 2080 Ti, one of the two. But at any rate, the reason why I'm bringing it back up today is because AMD recently dropped the prices on a lot of their Threadripper SKUs. That includes the 24 core part, but I'm more interested in testing their 12 core 2920X mainly because the core and thread count directly competes now with the Ryzen 9 3900X, which in my last video is now inside of the Dan Case A4 build with 16 gigs of DDR4 and a GTX 1080 Ti. If you wanna find out more about how this actually functions with a 12 core inside of it, go ahead and check that video out, it's kinda of interesting. But here's the deal, 3900X is 499 US dollars. After the price cuts, the 2920X is now $650. Yes, that's a bit more expensive. However, we're gonna have a quick showdown between these two CPUs today to determine which one is the better buy. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of tests. I'm gonna do Cinebench and Adobe Premiere Pro. This is the actual system I'm gonna test with the 3900X. So it's already sort of at a disadvantage with the cooling solution in place, which has a 92 millimeter liquid AIO. Whereas our Threadripper rig is actually rocking a Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. Yes, it's an air cooler, but it's one hell of an air cooler. Outperforms a lot of liquid coolers, in fact. And of course we have a large chassis, so there's gonna be a lot more airflow pumping through that thing than this guy. Should be kind of an interesting test. Yes, it's not apples to apples because of the chassis and the coolers and all that, but again, Rushed video. So on that note, let's get started. All right, so we've got both of our systems set up here. We've got the 3900X build in this corner and the 2920X over here. You can just see the size difference is vast. I'm gonna test the 3900X first because it's ready to go, whereas I have not touched this system, again, since January. So right now we're doing like tons of Windows updates. It's, it's already been like a half an hour and still going strong. On that note, I'm gonna go ahead and start our render test here in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is a 10 minute 4K clip rendered out with H.264 encoding. All right, timer's good. We're gonna start the clock, right? Now, all right, I'm gonna let this guy do his thing and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, that was pretty fast. Nine minutes and 14 seconds is the score. We got up to 92.6 degrees Celsius at, at its hottest, although I think it was sort of hovering in the high 80s to maybe 90 C or so. Obviously very warm, but if you guys watched the last video, we went into detail about that. Not too bad though for a 92 millimeter liquid AIO. Clock speeds were looking really good as well the whole time. We were hitting in the high threes, even the low fours. You can see here, a lot of the cores actually spiked up to 4.6, just over 4.5 gigahertz. Uh, on some of the cores at times. So that's our score for Premiere. Let's go ahead and fire up Cinebench. All right, Cinebench R20 now, here we go. Come on, get it. All right, what do we get? 7,047 points. I'm gonna run the test two more times then we'll take the average because sometimes Cinebench scores can be a little inconsistent. This room is so ugly, it renders me speechless. <laughs> Uh -oh. All right, our three Cinebench runs are done. Those are the three scores, averaging to 7,017 points for the multi-threaded test. All right, and Windows Updates is done on our Threadripper system. All right, I'm gonna start with Cinebench this time for the Threadripper build. All right, sorry, that's probably making you sick. All right, just like the 3900X, I'm gonna do three runs and then we'll average them out. Okay, the results are in. Our Ryzen 9 3900X got a score of 7,017 in the multi-threaded test. In the same test, our Ryzen Threadripper 2920X scored 5,702. The 3900X outperformed it by 20 Three percent, and it's $150 cheaper. Woo! My boy is killing it. So it's pretty evident as to why AMD recently slashed the prices of their second gen Threadripper CPUs. I think they should have slashed them even more because it's not even performing in the same ballpark, which is insane. Of course, there's still the argument to be made for high-end desktop platforms like uh, X399 here. If you have a need for the extra IO, there's more connectivity on board, you get more PCIe lanes. Granted, they're PCIe Gen 3 versus Gen 4 now. And you also get things like quad-channel memory support. But at the end of the day, the 3900X is just 
an absolute unit. I'm just super impressed right now. Let's, let's try the uh, premiere test and see what happens. All right, we're just about ready to start our premiere test here. Exactly the same clip, same effects and everything, same render settings, and we are ready to rock. Remember, the time to beat is nine minutes and 15, 16 seconds? Nine minutes and 14 seconds, just, just like I said. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. All right, so how did our 2920X stack up against the 3900X in a 10 minute 4K render in Adobe Premiere Pro? 15 minutes and 54 seconds compared to nine minutes and 14 seconds with the Ryzen 9 part. And really, this system had every advantage going for it. I mean, it had the better case with more airflow. It had a better cooler. This thing was like hovering in the 60s. It was like 65 to 70 C the entire time. And still, the 3900X could not be stopped. The multi-threaded performance of the 3900X is unbelievable. I mean, unless you need the extra IO, I think the 3900X is by far the better value as demonstrated today. The 3900X just continues to impress me every time I test it and do something new with it. The multi-threaded performance for 500 bucks, a 12 core CPU that's outperforming a second gen Ryzen Threadripper 2920X by that much. And it's $150 cheaper. It's just really cool right now that uh, this kind of performance, this level of performance is coming to the mainstream desktop CPU market. There's my quick and dirty video, guys. Sorry again that it's, it's quick and dirty, but I'm going to bounce out of here, guys. I got a mountain to climb. Uh, I'm probably not going to climb it. I'm too lazy for that. I will see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it get subscribed for more haphazardly thrown together videos like this one and i will see you guys in the next video Pew!